in Manchester, um, which would which would be totally inappropriate if they didn't have people in it. But look at those figures again. There's very little detail, you know. The, the, there's there's no features in the in the faces, but you get the idea of the hustle and bustle. There's even a little child there as well. Um, and you can get an idea of what people are doing as well. This is. Sorry, um, I can't see what you're talking about. Can anyone else? Jess? Yes. I've, I've swapped the screen over. You swapped yeah. the screen to what? Are you there, Jess? Oh, we've lost Jess. Oh, no, I'm here. Oh, she's here. She's here. <laughs> um, some people say they can't see the. Oh! Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay, Naomi, good. Um, so, yeah, this is people um, having a few drinks. And my people are, you know, a bit weird. They're not um, a bit like my buildings, really. They're not conventional, but you get a, a feeling and a, a sense of space. Um, this is lots of attempts of drawing people. Um, and if I was on a train or a bus, I might. This is at Piccadilly Railway Station. <laughs> oh dear. Um, I kind of quite like them. This is in Venice. And, you know, clearly you cannot draw a building in Venice without including crowds of people. And this, I think, works particularly well because of the, the dual colours. Um, using people in the foreground and the background. Uh, we talk, I talk about drawing wherever I was. You know, this, this was when we went to Morocco, I think, and I literally draw people as we were in the queue waiting to get through passport. So I, I, I wrote this when um, President Trump was was in office. So um, the thing you need to know about people, again, is to do with proportions. The waist of people is halfway up, half their body is above the waist and half their body is below the waist. And if you split the whole person into eighths, then the head is one eighth of the whole body. And as I say that, apart from the US president, apart from the ex US president. Um, so I want you just to have a little bit of a go, try and draw the outline like this. So very quick outlines. And what you're trying to do is get the, those proportions where the waist is halfway. I'm doing it as well, I still can't do it. Is it easier to draw somebody from the side or straight on? I don't know. Okay, you've got another couple of seconds with this one. And then I'm going to switch over. So just finish which one you're on. Try this chap. When you're drawing the head, don't forget the neck. And really what we're trying to do here is just get that idea of proportion right. I think I have a psychological, something stops me from drawing things, people, properly. Okay, and why don't we try drawing some people walking? Shall I make my screen a bit bigger? I'm still, you're still seeing the things on the, is that better? Mm. 
And then I've kind of lost my mouse again, which is very annoying when I do that. So again, just do outlines, trying to get heads and faces the same. And when you're doing this, if you practice this outside, uh, you go for the what's called the Frankenstein technique, where you make people, you make your drawings up of different type, different parts of different people. So if you're looking at people walking along by the railway station or wherever, you might draw one person's legs and then you might draw and then they walked off and you might draw the next person's body and a third person's head so you kind of get a kind of frankenstein effect um this is easy because they're photographs well this is easier um Okay, you've done a couple of those. I think you can probably, most of you can see what I've been doing as well. Um, I remember somebody, I was complaining to another, um, somebody who was a, quite a good artist about not being able to draw people. And she said, <laughs> she said, oh, it, it will just happen. The penny will drop. And that was about three years ago and I'm still waiting. I'll show you what I was doing this week. Ah, it's here. In fact, I'll hold this up so everybody can see it. These, um, we managed to get away last week to uh, Cornwall. Um, and these are some of the figures that I drew uh, in Cornwall. Um, I've kind of come to the conclusion that I'm never going to be able to draw anybody particularly accurately. So I kind of have developed a style, uh, very simplistic style of drawing people which animates the urban scene um, but makes yeah that's, a, that's one of particular people waiting to go on a, a ferry and for those of you who want to know this is in uh, Padstow in northern Cornwall um, which was very pleasant a week or so ago. Let's see some examples then, how people done. Oh, Faye, those are great. Yeah, nice, Jean, yeah. Proportions are great, Barbara Williams, yeah. Liz, yeah. Oh, I think you're all cheating. I don't think one of you are beginners. I think you've all done this before. What we do when we're out and about with this, nice one, Maxine, yeah, very good. What we do when we're out and about with this is literally uh, stand people in two lines and uh, you draw the person opposite you, you know, they're obviously in 3D and um, the, the results are a little more um, erratic than the ones I've just seen. I think certainly the idea of having it in 2D in front of you is an, ad an advantage. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah. How do people find that? Yes. Oh, that was hard. hard. Very hard. Hard. It is hard. It is hard. You've done two minutes of it or five minutes of it, you know. Um, uh, stick at it for another seven years and you'll be as good as me. <laughs> uh, no, it's um, what I would, I, I, I think I'll leave people drawing there it's um but i would just say keep practicing at it and try and develop a style uh that you're comfortable with 
uh, and again it, you just have to give a flavor uh, of um, oh I'll, I'll show you this this guy this guy called Jim Rich Richards it's very um, traditional architecture type drawing of people you know he, he literally draws people um, like that you know they're, they're just a few lines in a, in a very big in a, in a much bigger environment and it's that idea of getting the sketch populated so my advice would be to just stick at it um i would normally show you some of those others and i'd also do a little video but we'll forget that because that's the challenge is actually to draw people as they're moving um but do you want to try that no no i won't go we'll, we'll move on we'll move on you can do that from the comfort of your ho own homes and um uh, or or go into town or somewhere else this afternoon and do it so um the next section is about adding some tone so i asked um if you would all have some colors or something that you might uh, use and some of you will have uh, watercolors and some of you will have pencil crayons and, and whatever else just to tell you my urban sketching setup is basically this little pan <coughs> oh Jess, we did say we were going to have a have a break, didn't we? Um, what yeah. time? Is it? What time is it? It's uh, eleven twelve. Okay, I think if people want to mosey off, if they need to use the loo, then fine. Just you know, leave and come back. You won't miss a great deal. Uh, but I think we'll, should we just crack on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, this is my uh, watercolor palette it just comes in a metal box um, and I fill these up um, they start off as half pans which you can buy as such and then when they they're emptied I, I fill them from watercolor tubes and if you get really if you get into urban sketching and start reading blogs and stuff online lots of urban sketchers will give you advice about what colors that they use um, and interestingly the those who are quite advanced I would say uh, they change their palettes depending on where they're going so when the Urban Sketching Symposium, International Urban Sketching Symposium was on in Manchester, I remember there being a flurry of messages from people asking advice about which colours they might bring to represent the uh, brickwork, you know, the overall uh, aura of Manchester and different people who knew more about those things than I did gave people advice about what what colours to put in their palette when they're coming to Manchester. I would have just said grey, but there we are. Um, <coughs> yeah, that's my rather messy looking palette. But um, today we're just going to use one colour and I use the word tone for that. Um, and the reason is this, because I think once you've started with line, and you feel a bit more comfortable with line, you, the next dimension is to add shadow, uh, et cetera, into a, into a sketch. And I'll give you some examples of how that changes things. Um, this is Dewsbury. So you can, and again, all these examples just include one tone. In this case, it's um, watercolor called, it, the color is indigo which is a, a blue, bluey gray color, which I really quite like. Um, and you can immediately change the tonal value of a sketch 
by um, adding a tone into some parts of it. This was actually done um, with a grey marker pen. Um, so just picking out the darker parts of your sketch um, and, and adding, adding tone to it. So up in Lancaster. Crikey, all these places I went to before, before COVID. Um, Lancaster. And can you see the pillars of the, the building in the centre? So by putting tone on one side of the pillars, you immediately give the impression of light uh, coming across from the left um, and, the, and, and then be consistent with where you put the tone. So with the, the gentleman, the figure in the foreground, you're putting a little bit of a tone on the right side of him and on the A board in front of him. So you get that idea that there's uh, light coming across people. And what I should have done also is put a bit of tone on the on the ground as well on that one. Um, yeah, that's not such a great example. Um, that's in Venice again. This is um, obviously in Liverpool. And look here, as well as the tone, um, look at the little spot colours. And you see that on quite a few of my sketches. I use a spot of yellow, spot of red, uh, just to accentuate things. And again, using street furniture here and a bit of humour with the massage sticker on the lamppost um, to give the depth. So you've got this, I mean, crazy, isn't it? To put this, this, this uh, post in front of most of the view of the cathedral and then, and then the traffic light and then the thing itself. Most people would, I think, try and get a view where you could see the whole thing. But I do like, I do like adding all that in. So this is a bit of a demo of what I do to add tone. Get my messy watercolour palette and using this uh, water, water brush. So for those of you who missed that, when I was talking as people were entering, the water brush is from a company called Pentel, although other people do them. And they have a reservoir of water actually in the barrel of the brush itself, which makes it a lot more convenient. So there's my indigo, a bit of indigo. I do a bit of a practice somewhere else on the page. Oh, too much water. I get a tissue, just wipe the, br wipe the brush, and then take some of the, take some of that off. So I get the right consist consistency of, of water and paint. Um, and then, if you remember the pre the the actual image of the building, the ground floor was essentially black, wasn't it? So I'm adding tone to the ground floor, to the car. And those two little lines there just suggests a window, a reflection in a window. So what, um, what you might do here is just kind of squint your eyes and think, right, which are the darker bits when you're looking at a scene? And immediately you can, you can add tone to those and hey presto, I added a few more lines here just to a um, few that I missed off. That's the, the pavement. 
and then a touch of yellow, my favourite colour. Um, just to add to the street scene. And a touch of red. There we are. So does it look like the thing? No, it's not a, it's, you know, it's an urban sketch. That's the, that's the final thing. Um, whoops. Now do I move on? Right, putting it all together. So, here we are. We've got, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a choice actually. There's a number of, there's a number of photographs here. Um, some have got people and some haven't. No, I'm not going to give you a choice. I'm going to show you them. I'm going to tease you with showing you all of these. And then I'm going to plum for one. Um, I think, okay, it's either that one, so either the pubs or it's the library. So let me get you all in front of me. Let me move this along. I can't see everybody actually, Jess, so you'll have to show, look at the show of hands. So show of hands for the library. And then show of hands for the pubs, which is probably a bit more complicated. I think there were more for the library there, weren't there, Jess? Yeah, I think so. I think so as well. So this is the this is um, Central Library in Manchester, obviously. Um, so I'm going to give you, I think maybe what time is it, please, Jess? It's twenty past eleven now. Okay, I think I'm going to give you. Um, 15 minutes, maybe a bit longer, um, to draw this, to draw this scene. And just as a reminder, I want you first to go in with blocks. Think of the foreground as well, because there's an interesting post there, which you might straighten up or you might keep leaning over. And think of it all in, in blocks rather than detail to start with. Um, those things on top of the columns, and somebody will tell me what they're called. They're not icon ionic columns there. What are they called? Yeah. Anyway, so I would draw them. I, I would literally, um, the feature of those sort of things is I've got a bit in the middle here. They've got a bit that comes out there. And they've got some curly bits here, like this. That's probably not how I would really draw them. But essentially, that is how much I would draw of the top of a column. Um, you don't have to try, I'll put that up there for you, Barbara. You don't have to try and draw everything, uh, every particular line. So it's to do with simplifying it. Um, yeah. Okay, so is everybody happy with that? We'll, we'll say um, 15 or 20 minutes starting from now. now. I might go and get myself another cup of tea while you're doing that.
Hope everyone's doing well there. So this is a very different experience from actually doing urban sketching out in out in the city or wherever you are. Um, but I would, if you have enjoyed today, I would encourage you to come along to a an urban sketching session. Um, there's no membership involved. It's just a case of keeping an eye on the Facebook group, finding the details and turning up at a particular location. And there tend to be dozens of other people, some of whom will, it will be their first session. Everyone's very friendly. Um, but to actually sit and draw in 3D and with other things going around on around you is a very different and a very enjoyable experience. You know, some people are worried about what if people come up and look at your work. Um, I've had nobody ever come up and look at my work and said, that's a pile of rubbish. Um, most people are very complimentary. And, and if you are worried about that sort of thing, there's techniques around it, like sit with your back to a wall so somebody can't come up behind you. Um, but I know that some of you will be bitten today because that's how urban sketching gets you. Um, it's a way of being creative without having to have a huge amount of talent. It's just to do with persistence. Um, and as one urban sketcher said to me, he said, don't worry about, don't worry about how you're progressing. Just draw, just keep on drawing. Draw every day if you can. And over time you do see a progression in fact, other people see a progression before you do. Um, and I'm now on to sketchbook number 45 or something. And I look back on the early sketchbooks just to encourage myself that I have made some progress. And it's very enjoyable. Yes, I've lost all track of time, so. Um, it's half past now. Okay. How far have you got with yours? How long did you? <laughs> um, I've got about two columns in, so. <laughs> okay. Well, tell us when you've got them all in, and then we'll, that's when we'll. All right. <laughs> Well, in a couple of minutes, we'll, I'll invite you to sit, show us how far you've got, and then if need be, we'll give you a bit more time after that. During lockdown number three, um, when it was December, January and February and it was cold and wet, I set about making some quite large drawings, A2, um, here in my studio. Um, and they were mainly with fountain pen and then with some watercolour and then some textures put on in Photoshop afterwards. Um, 
and one of them was actually of Central Library, not exactly that view. Um, but this is this is the um, this is the view of this is the one I did of which was at A two. Um, and you might be able to put it a bit closer, you might be able to see the top of the columns and how little detail there is in there. And that's at A2, never mind A5 or A4. So worry not about um, getting every line in. What's nice about this is got the, it's again, it's about the style of architecture, everybody knows this style of architecture. So if you were only just to draw a few lines and then, so I'm, who's good at architecture, who knows the, What's this style called? Right, I'm finished now. <laughs> okay. So even if you draw you draw the top of it, which is like that, you know, there's 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 this sort of the way that they the top comes out at an angle. And what all I've drawn here. These little little dots along along here. That, in my mind, is a good representation of what's going on in the canopy of that. There's a, there's a special name for that bit, isn't there? Of that part of the building. But to the viewer, you automatically know the style of architecture that you're looking at. So, and Jess, we have, I'm not sure we've seen any of yours yet in this session. Let's have a look. <laughs> Bring it a bit closer into the, the camera. Bit up a bit. Excellent. <laughs> I like the I, I like the fact you've got again that lamppost, you know, it just adds adds the depth into it as well. Yeah. Very nice. Has anybody managed to put any had time to put any tone on it yet? No. Should we give you a few more minutes? Ah, let's have a look at that, Melanie. Excellent. What have you been using there to put tone on? It's, uh, it's watercolour, like a box right. of... Box right. Of Excellent. Excellent. Let me see it again. Nice. And you've got the, you've got the people, you've got the people in there. Yeah. Well, there yeah. 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 Well, I had to put on um, three columns instead of four. Right? <laughs> I ran out of room. <laughs> you, you you put in three instead of four, but nobody yeah. would know unless no. you're looking at the page. You know, you show that to somebody and they wouldn't know. So that's fine. You you could allow to do that. How did you how did you find it? How are you finding this experience? Yeah, it was it's that's come out a lot. The, the colours made a big difference. Putting a bit of colour on it, yeah, it a big difference to it. Yeah, yeah. So you can add. You know, you you, you again. It's to do with adding uh, adding depth and uh, dimension to it. Has anybody else had any opportunity to put in a bit of... Uh... Ah, Faye, you already have a water brush there, I see. Yeah, well, well ahead. Yeah. Anyone else put any tone on it yet? I'll give you, maybe give you a couple more minutes. So rather than, rather than dab with the, with the tissue, Faye, um, use the tissue to dry the brush and then pull the extra the water or, or thing off with the brush rather than with the tissue. Yeah, so get that as dry as you can and then, uh, and then pull any excess off the paper with the brush rather than the tissue because the tissue will just tend to blob it, um, which is a technical term. So how many of you do you think of you've got that relationship right, particularly 
here in the way so the the top of the building the curve of the top of the the rotunda there it cuts into the rectangular canopy at a particular point it's not at halfway it's slightly left of halfway if you're looking at it straight on so that's what I mean about getting the relationship between different buildings correct and then again if you're looking at the town hall extension on the right hand side with those little windows if you look at the roof line there where does that roof line cut into your library your round library um, have you got that relationship right um, and so it's those sort of it's those sort of initial lines and blocks that if you get them right will stand up um, help you make a, a good sketch um i'm dying to see i'm dying to see what people have done um so let's Faye, come on you're working hard on this i want to see what you're doing with this water brush oh wow yeah great you see the relationship between keep it there for a minute the relationship where you've got the lines cutting into those are good Again, you haven't got the right number of columns, but it doesn't matter. Um, that's that's really very good. What are you using to get for the tone? Is it watercolor? Is it yellow ochre watercolor? Uh, yeah, it's watercolor. Yeah, good. And 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 I like what you've done there. You know, you can see the um, inside the beyond the columns inside that bit. You've made that darker with the tone which again is is added to it what what do you think about the, the the figures are difficult because they're really quite small but think about where the heads on the photograph think about where the heads of the of the figures are if you make them too low mm -hmm. it looks like you are higher up that your viewpoint is higher up okay. um so on, in the photograph their heads are level with the base of the building, whereas with yours you've got it slight. But I'm I'm being picky. No, that's, I that's, want you to be picky. <laughs> no, that's great. That's really good. Excellent. Thank you. Anybody else um, got something to show? Patrick. Great, a bit closer up into the camera if you won't mind, Patrick. Yeah, these are great, aren't they? Going, here's a lot closer. Let me see what you've done to the top of the columns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So simple, so simple, Patrick. And, and yet you look at the sketch and you know exactly the... the what what is the, what are these ones called? They're not ionic and they're not something. They're something else type of columns. But immediately you know that those are the sort of things you're looking at from that. And it's 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 um it's just a, a, a smidgen of yeah. How have you found it, Patrick? How did you find that? Um, I really enjoyed it when um, it was really tricky and I'm always tempted to try and add more detail. Do you always do the full blocks before you begin? Because uh, I find myself I don't know, do I? wanting to zone in. Yeah, it, you, you know, I mean, I did this, I did this one. Um, on, on Thursday evening, um, I just went out for an hour and, and did this at a local pub. Um, and what, how did I do that? Yeah, you might. I might have done bits of it. Um, sorry, this has gone off, hasn't it? 
low power mode. My camera just needs to be plugged in. It was on a hundred when we started, but let me just. No, I think you can. I think you can um, just do a little bit. Um, you can do blocks on one part and then um, do the detail in that. Oh, dear. Hang on. oh that you can still see that. That's still working, isn't it? Yeah. The joys of online teaching. So um, I might have done a section of that and then added a bit of detail and gone back and in and back to it. But Patrick, you've obviously drawn before. You can't say you're an absolute beginner, surely. I, I, I have drawn before, maybe a little bits and bobs, but nothing, you know, I haven't picked up a pencil in a long time. Yeah, and talking of pens and pencils, it is it is that idea, because this is sketching, you do go straight in with a pen, um, and um, it doesn't really matter whether the line, the line is wrong or right, you can draw another one. Um, and what you won't find when you see urban sketches is people there with pencil rubbing out lines and stuff like that. It, you, you know, you're, you're straight in there and if you get it right, you get it right. If you don't, you draw another one. But then I'd, you can define what right is as well. You limit yourself as to how long you spend on an image? No, um, it really depends on, on, on how long you've got. Sometimes I, I get to our group sessions a bit late and may only have half an hour to do something or then you've got an hour. Um, yeah. And, and, but what I would do, I, I will start the sketch with an idea of how long I'm going to allow myself to have to do it. Okay, I've got half an hour to do this. Okay, I've got an hour and a half to do this. And that will influence um, what I do and, and, and how long I take on it. But also it'll influence the format if I'm actually carrying around my uh, A4 book or my A, A, A5 book, I might say, well, I'll do a bigger one now because I've got a bit more time. Um, where Would anybody else like to show their... Oh. Liz, put it a bit closer if you wouldn't mind. Oh, great. Yeah, you've got it all there. And what? how have you done your tone? Watercolour. Right. And uh, uh, have you used um, Payne's Grey or have you used? I've not got my glasses on, so I can't see. I think it is Payne's Grey. Excellent. I'm glad. <laughs> That's probably an advantage, actually, not having your glasses on. <laughs> Sometimes I start drawing and I realise I haven't got my reading glasses on. And I, I think, oh, actually, it's quite good. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to I'm going to draw a line under that one because we're going to do it. We're going to do another one before we finish. Um, but if anybody would like to show me what you, in fact, everybody, please just put their pictures up to the screen, and we can all have a look at everybody else's. Great, 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 great. Yeah, that's terrific. Wonderful, well done. And um, what typifies an urban sketching gathering also is what we call a throwdown, which I think isn't a horrible American word, but um, we literally put all our books um, on the floor uh, at the end of the session for people to look at. We do a little pavement gallery and people look at each other's work and encourage each other um, and say, what pen did you use for that? etc etc okay so shall we do uh, again Jess sorry could you give me a time check it's uh, 1148 okay um, we probably haven't got time to do another one but what I would like to what I would like to do is um, because this is city of trees um, just give you just give you a bit of a an insight um, 
of how to draw trees and vegetation. And I'm kind of gonna gonna I'm going to crib from this guy who um, is called James Richards. So if you want to check out James Richards as an urban sketcher, um, he's very influential. He's done a great book which is called Freehand Drawing and Discovery um, with lots of tips in there. And it's a, it's a large expensive book which uh, I actually got out of the library and for educational purposes um, copied some of the pages um, which I'll show you here and how how he actually draws trees so um, in fact let me hold it up to here Barbara because you can't see my other camera and this works just as well if not better um, so it literally starts with one line for the trunk and then he puts another line over the top for the top of the canopy um, adds a few more branches and the dot here and there and creates amazing trees um, and with a bit of color a bit of to two-tone color there um, you've got suggestion of what's going on in a park and by putting some in the foreground um, as well as the background and let me also show you this page so yeah there are some wonderful urban sketches who take hours and hours and hours over drawing foliage and the results are incredible but I went on a workshop with one guy and I just got so bored to be quite honest it was like okay that's great but in terms of telling for me it's about telling the story and drawing lots and lots of trees beautifully doesn't do it for me um, but and certainly in the urban environment you don't need that many but this is a really good example of how quickly to draw something um, that gives a suggestion. I like this one as well, this kind of conifer thing. And it's just added different types of different colours there. So it's not all green, there's bits of something else as well. Um, and similarly with, um, he lives in Miami, so he draws lots of these sort of things, which are fairly easy to do once you get the hang of it. Um, and, he, and even look at the detail or the lack of detail on a hedge, um, starting off with a few lines and a few dots. And again, look at the people detail as well. There's so little there, there's shoulders and blobs for heads and you know where you're at. Um, so we could do some examples of that, but I'm not going to. Um, I want to just kind of open it up now and, and for the last few minutes and answer some questions, uh, ask you guys how you've you found it. And um, let me just stop the sharing. It's all going horribly wrong here, Jess. I can't stop my sharing things, so I can't. I think I can, that's fine. Um, there we go. Right, so, okay. So I, I can see you all better now um, because I've got rid of that. Um, would you all mind unmuting yourselves and let's have a bit of a discussion about it. Um, it might, for some of you, have been a bit different from what you expected. Um, I have to say, I've seen all of your work and you are now all sketches. I could give you a certificate, I would. Um, it's to do with confidence and it's to do with practice. I was, talked about the things that I did when I started. This was my very first sketchbook. Um, and my sketches were not at all great. This was 
the Royal Exchange Theatre. Um, oh, these are awful. <laughs> this is... So um, how long ago was that? Man? This was 2013, I think. Oh, so this, this was uh, Red Hill Street in Ancoats, which I tried twice. And I got, just got perspective wrong. I looked as if I was actually in a drone um, above the canal. Um, but, you know, and I, I would literally draw, I remember taking our son to football training and I would literally draw the inside of the car just for practice. You know, this is how long that was ago. That was actually a, a tape recorder. <laughs> yeah. So um, my advice is always to keep at it. Um, are there any questions? Len, it's not a question, more a comment, but um, for me, um, my drawing is really what I've, so I've picked up over the last four or five years is copying things a lot, you know, that's already done. Um, and I get a bit hung up on the detail because I'm not confident, you know, in terms of the perspective and things like that. And um, this sort of sketching is actually really exciting, but really scary as well, because it's quite freehand. Like, you know, when you said use a pen and not a pencil, so I can't rub it out 20 times. <laughs> but that, that is quite liberating as well. And also not like, it, well, it's exciting because it's not like the detail isn't um, the number one thing, if you know what I mean. It's an opportunity yeah. to be a bit more freehand and creative. And I think, from, so it's really exciting to see that. I guess for me, it's just doing it and doing it and doing it. So I feel more yeah. okay about not copying. But who's going to tell you off? That's I know, I know, no one, but yeah, I know it is. It's about changing my mindset to doing it, I think. But it, it, it is absolutely. And, and yeah. I would absolutely recommend keeping sketchbooks because then you can actually see over a period of time of how things have progressed. Um, and, 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 and then if you use them also as a visual diary, you're just drawing wherever you are. It's a really yeah. nice thing. Well, what was I doing this time last year? And there it is all in the sketch and a bit of writing and your shopping list and whatever else you want to write in, in it, you know. Um, so um, I, I have to say, I mean, it sounds a bit trite, but sketching has changed my life. Um, changed how I spend my free time, uh, changed how I make money because it's now how I, uh, what I do professionally. And it's also, I've, you know, I'm, I'm in contact with people around the world who I meet from time to time. And uh, there's a whole swathe of people locally who, who I meet and also know on, on online. So it literally, it literally has changed my life for the best. That sounds dreadful, doesn't it? But it, it, it has, it has. Um, yeah. And, and through, through art, through creativity. So mm -hmm. how amazing is that, you know? Yeah. Um, Naomi, you've done this before, I think. You see, I don't think you were, how is it, di how is it different from what you've done in the past? I haven't, until lockdown, I hadn't picked up art for ages. And then my friend got me to do a sketchbook event for two weeks. So it got me back. I haven't, I was trying to do something once a week, but I, the last three or four weeks, I haven't done anything. Yeah. So actually, I'll show you, because I was really scared. The first time I did the library, I was too um, rigid with my pen marks, because it scares me just to do it in pen. Yeah, yeah. And I think it was Danny Gregory won the tutorial. He did it all with a continuous line. Right, okay. Then I did a second attempt, and that was with a continuous line, doing the whole form, and then I added a few more details. Wow. Just to try and loosen me up. Yeah, yeah. I felt really scared of the permanence of that one. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It, it, is, it is to do with loosen, loosening yourself up and, yeah. and, and, and really doing less. Up. Say again. I feel really rusty with it, but I always feel good doing it. Yeah. When I do it. yeah, yeah, and it is something you can you can do whenever. And you know, during lockdown, I just got some tins out of the cupboard, 
put them on the table one evening and and drew and drew the contents of the of the bloody cupboard you know it's kind of like and it was great and and i use instagram a lot now so i share stuff and there's a whole community of people on instagram to be inspired by uh, and to be encouraged by as well so i really would i really would go for it um can i just reiterate if you want to take it forward check out manchester urban sketches there are also um local urban sketches groups in, in in liverpool they have a lovely group in liverpool which usually meet the first saturday of every month when they can and there's a group in macclesfield there's a group up in cumbria there is there's groups in yorkshire um but the manchester urban sketching group if you're on facebook you can just join that group and you get notifications of when things are happening. So I'm doing one on the 10th of July. Um, I think something like one till four or something like that. So you're all very welcome to, to come along to that. I feel like a DJ, I've just kind of finished at 12 o'clock, just in time for the news. <laughs> uh, Jess, is there anything you want to add? Um, well, just thank you very much. That was absolutely fantastic and it was lovely to do some drawing. It's a very mindful, calm way to start your weekend, which is really, really nice. Um, could I ask you to send me the links to those groups and then I'll try and get them out to everybody just in oh. case anyone's missed any of those. That would be great. Um, and we'll be putting the recording up on YouTube as long as everyone's absolutely fine with that. Put, uh, put now in the chat if you're not fine with that. Um, and then everyone can have another look so we can go back over those techniques uh, techniques um so yeah thank you very much then that was that was really really great and i'll email everyone with all the different details great okay well enjoy the rest of your day and your weekend and i look forward to seeing you at a urban sketching event soon thank, thank you, you. Thank, you. Thank, thank you many thanks thank you very much okay bye, bye. Take care, everybody bye bye, bye.